Hello and welcome to our complimentary webinar, which is brought to you today in partnership with Matchboard, Auscontact's national silver sponsor, and it's entitled How an Australian Innovation is Helping Connect the Market for Contact Centre Services and Solution. Today's webinar will run for approximately 60 minutes and during that time, with the help of today's many special guests, we hope to spark your interest and engage you in the conversation as well as provide some ideas to take back to your respective businesses. To round off the session, we'll be having a Q&A at the end of the webinar. I'm Fiona Keogh the CEO of OzContact and your moderator for today, as well as Sharon Melamed, Managing Director at Matchboard. While we're waiting for everyone to join us, let's use the time to quickly run through some housekeeping with you. Remember, it's important to interact with us to maximise the benefit. And as you know, there's no need to take too many notes because we'll be providing you with the recording of the webinar. To interact with us, please use the Q&A button on the control panel. You can ask questions or make comments for Sharon or myself from time to time. Remember, we are going to have a full Q&A session at the end of the webinar. So please type the questions as you go along so you don't forget to ask them. If you're listening through headphones or speakers and experience any issues with your internet connection, please note that on the control panel, you can click the raise hand button and the OzContact team will rush to your aid. Or you can revert to your confirmation email with the link to the webinar and all the relevant phone numbers and access codes will be available there for you. I know that many of you are familiar with asking questions, but let's just try out the questions pane on the control panel now, just in case. And the question for today is, one that's related to the situation that we're actually in, what stage of lockdown, so what number of lockdown is Melbourne in at the moment? Now that was a very subtle hint. It's a number that's between one and five. Okay, so let's see what people are actually saying. We're getting some answers here. Alex knows the right answer. Inaki knows the right answer. Paul knows the right answer. Martin knows the right answer. Oh, we've got a very smart crowd with us today, Sharon. So that's really good to see. Absolutely brilliant. Okay, fantastic. It's a, it's a bit of a challenge and our hearts absolutely go out to everybody that's in Melbourne and more broadly in Victoria. So we're going to move on to a little bit of a Q&A with Sharon because whilst most of you would know her friendly face and would know she's a bit of an industry legend, um, I'm going to share a little bit about Sharon. So I'm really delighted to introduce Sharon Melamed, Managing Director of Matchboard. OzContact has been blessed to have a partnership with Matchboard since the company launched in 2012. Matchboard is a free to use matching website and provides a fast and easy way for contact centre leaders to find their perfect match suppliers. Matchboard and Sharon have done the contact centre industry proud with a long list of awards. Yes, Sharon must have trophies all over her, her, her home at the moment, uh, including the Australian Business of the Year in 2018 and the 2018 Optus My Business Award, Suncorp Innovator of the Year and the Entrepreneur of the Year in Women in ICT Awards just last year. Sharon, it's really great to have you here today. And I know you started your career as a Japanese speaking call centre agent. Very interesting. And now you're an award winning entrepreneur. Can you tell us briefly about your journey? I'd love to share that. And, and thanks everyone for tuning in. Uh, yes, yeah, so I, after university, somehow landed a job as a Japanese speaking call centre agent, having made it in Japanese. And I was, um, manning a hotline for Japanese tourists in distress at this Japanese call center outsourcing company. And these distressing calls were actually very stressful. <laughs> and uh, so I actually put up my hand to move into business development. And um, I had in the back of my mind that the company uh, had offices in the US. 
So I asked if I could relocate. Um, they had offices in San Francisco and New York. And I thought, well, if you can make it in New York, you can make it anywhere. So off I went, packed my bags, and I actually ended up staying there 10 years through the dark days of September 11. But then through the more exciting times of the whole dot-com internet boom, it was actually a very exciting time of entrepreneurship because people were coming up with these dot-com companies um, everywhere. And um, of course, uh, many of them went bust. But um, by that stage, I'd really caught that entrepreneurial bug and um, harvested a, a desire ever since to start my own business. And that's exactly what I did when I came back to Australia or a few years after I came back at least. So that's my journey. Wow. And that's not just a journey, Sharon. That's, that's a bit of an all around the world trip. So how did you actually come up with the idea for Matchboard? I always loved connecting people and at its heart, Matchboard is like a connecting or even a dating site uh, for contact center and customer solutions. So we can connect the buyers and the suppliers. Um, so instead of like you might do on a dating site, put in brown hair, tall, big muscles, whatever, you actually put in your contact center needs. You say, I need contact center technology. I'm looking for a cloud solution. Uh, for 50 people, um, this is my budget, these are the channels I need, this is my timeline, and presto, our platform can instantly identify um, up to five highly rated suppliers that can meet all your criteria. And I must say, it really gives me a thrill every time we make a match like this, and, and we'll see three uh, great stories of matches we've made um, later on in the webinar. But, um, like most people, I actually used to use search engines like Google when I wanted to find a supplier. And I'd type in things like customer service training providers, Australia or call center outsourcing companies, Sydney, and Google would serve up millions of search results. It still does today. And so I thought, wouldn't it be great one day if people could just type in all their high level needs and, and not just a few keywords. And in that way, instead of millions of search results, get maybe just that handful, that short list of perfectly matched suppliers. That was my vision when I started Matchboard. And I'm happy to say it's really worked. It's been eight years now. We have thousands of happy clients and I'll be introducing a few of them shortly. Fantastic. So Sharon, given that our audience is predominantly contact centers today, Tell us a bit more about the services that Matchboard makes matches on. Yes, of course. Well, we have seven broad categories of services and solutions that we match. Um, the first one is technology. So that's things like cloud contact center, workforce management, knowledge management software, speech analytics, chatbots. Um, the second category is outsourcing. So whether a company needs a call centre solution in Australia or near shore in New Zealand or offshore, um, we have a match for all those needs. Um, the other five categories are training, consulting, for example, customer experience consulting, uh, recruiting, digital and data. Data is things like um, you want to buy a list, of te a telemarketing list, or you may want to clean up your database of customers. So, so those are the things that we cover. Fantastic, Sharon. Thank you. And it, it sounds to me like many OzContact members have benefited by the great service that Matchboard provides and that you, through your data, are in a box seat in terms of understanding what the market is truly looking at at the moment. So how it's behaving. So I'm going to hand over to you right now so that you can tell us all about the trends you're seeing. Off you go. Looking forward to it. <laughs> yeah. So um, I thought the audience might like to see um, the actual data from the Matchboard website platform. So I'm going to reveal all today uh, and tell you what are the hot products and services in the market? What are people buying? What are people researching? Um, and obviously, I'll touch on the impact of COVID-19, which has really affected things. Um, and if you go to matchboard.com.au, which after the webinar, I hope everyone will just have a play around and see what it's all about. Um, 
You'll see we cover all those services and solutions we outlined, but we also have a huge library of articles, guides, white papers um, that people often consult right at the start of their buying journey when they're just researching the market. So we're really in a box seat, as Fiona said, in terms of seeing what knowledge people are seeking out, what solutions they're looking for. I wanted to start with a bit of a good, good news slide <laughs> because March, April, May, I don't know how it was for everyone on this webinar, but uh, it was um, pretty depressing for us in terms of um, a big drop in, in traffic to our website. Um, but then something happened in June. We saw a big rebound, in fact, 48% jump in traffic. Um, so that trend has actually continued in July, which, which is really great that people are getting back into the market and, and buying um, contact center solutions. Um, I guess before they buy, um, they, like I said, research. Um, and I just brought up here four examples of uh, pieces of content we've got on our website where we saw a big jump um, comparing this June to last June. So um, I think with everyone moving to the homeworking environment, um, it's no surprise that there were a lot of people looking at cloud contact center solutions um, this year versus the same time last year. Um, so that tra traffic went up more than triple. Um, we saw people looking for automation solutions um, a lot more than before. We saw people looking at articles which had a health call center or emergency call center angle. And later on, we've got a, a health call center case study, actually. Um, and interestingly, the, the piece of content that got the most um, increase in traffic was uh, virtual agents and chat box. And what are their benefits? And I think that reflects the fact that um, the frontline call contact center agents were under huge pressure, people had, had trouble in some sectors ramping up and the technology came to the rescue in taking some of the burden off those um, human call center agents and enabled um, the public and customers to get answers faster. So that's on the content side. What I'd like to do now is um, look at specifically, not what people are researching and reading, but what are they actually buying? So in the next three slides, I've just picked three categories out of the seven uh, that we cover um, to show you what the difference was June this year versus last year. And the first category is outsourcing. So we saw a similar, similar number of quest, requests to last year, but what's interesting to note here is that there was a double digit rise in onshore call center outsourcing requests and a double digit decline in offshore contact center outsourcing. Um, and that's obviously because there were lockdowns in the Philippines and India, which really impacted Australian organizations who, who were exposed over there and had to quickly um, get together a solution onshore to be able to uh, service their customers. The next category um, is technology and digital, which I've lumped together here. Um, we got a lot more requests in those areas um, this year versus last year. Um, one to watch here is video. I mean, we're all communicating today via video. I think video is the channel to watch for um, customer engagement moving forward in a customer service or sales environment that people are just more comfortable these days since COVID with that video engagement. Um, and, and also that um, the chat box and automation uh, RPA um, really uh, seems to have accelerated in the market with people um, making much faster decisions than what they were used to uh, last year. Data, uh, look, we don't get too many requests in that area, but we did get a whole bunch more. Um, this particular period we analyzed in June where we saw people who may, some industries had a lot of time on their hands suddenly. Um, so they were using that time productively to um, request help in cleaning up their customer database. Um, and then others needing to pivot their business, reach out to new segments of the market, new prospects, and they were wanting to buy lists. 
So um, it's, it's quite interesting um, to see um, which services um, have gone up on the radar. Um, and uh, that, that's just three uh, I've um, actually uh, pointed out. But uh, I think I'll stop talking for a minute because we want to go to a poll. Over to you, Fiona. Thanks, Sharon. And we do uh, need to go to a poll. Jess, if you could launch the poll. Um, so we're going to ask a question. And the question is, which services or solutions are you going to market for in the next six months? Um, and let's face it, we're hoping that COVID encourages us to um, do some more. So is it technology? Is it outsourcing? Is it consulting, digital data, training, recruiting? We're not in the market for anything or it's not applicable to my role. And you can pick as many or as few of these as you like. Sharon, your business, Matchboard, is actually a global business, isn't it? Um, so are you seeing a difference uh, in the Australian market versus uh, overseas in terms of uh, what people are interested in, in buying? Um, yeah, I think everyone was trying to do the um, work from home <laughs> scenario. So everyone was scrambling to get their technology into the cloud. Um, everyone was in, in the, all the different markets were scrambling to recruit people who could uh, operate in that work from home environment. So there were some common themes, but looking, we're particularly um, out of all the international markets um, into the UK. Um, and it does seem that Australia might have got their act together a bit faster there uh, during COVID. Um, I think our industry um, really pulled together in a very admirable way. And um, having the single voice for the industry in Oz content, I'm sure that helped. <laughs> um, Thank you. That people knew where to go to get get advice um, if they were stuck. So, Thank you. Uh, yeah. Yeah. So, Jess, if you could just close the poll and let let's see um, what people are saying. So, okay. So, 19% are not in the market for anything. But I tell you what. Um, I guess there won't, wouldn't be a surprise there, Sharon, that technology is up there with a bullet. Yeah, that, I would have expected that. Interesting result, though. Yeah, great to see the spread into digital uh, and training. Okay, so let's move right along, Sharon, back to yes. you. Sure. Well, I'm really excited because now I get to introduce um, three case studies. Uh, these are marriages, if you like, perfect matches, of a buyer and supplier that have come through the Matchboard platform and everything's worked out brilliantly. So we've invited three such case studies along today. And the first one I'd like to introduce is Todd Gorsuch, who is the CEO of Customer Science and uh, Craig Mendel, Head of Customer Success and Support at Tyro. Thanks, Sharon. Um, I'll, I might kick into it. So just a quick intro from us. Um, Customer Science, I'm the CEO of Customer Science, Todd Gorsuch. We bring customer experience vision to life. Um, our mission in life is using our consulting people and technology capabilities to take customers from A to B in terms of what they need from a, uh, their vision for customer experience and call centres. And I'm delighted um, Craig could join us today as well and talk a little bit about Tyro. Um, Craig actually joined Tyro just after the Matchboard start but we'll um he'll be able to explore how uh and what happened with the tyro experience so craig do you want to do a quick intro yeah sure thanks todd uh thanks sharon and thanks fiona great start uh very energetic really insightful sharon um so thanks for your insights uh yeah my name's craig uh, i've been with tyro now just over 12 months um and tyro is a relatively small fintech uh with a big punch so with a um, largest provider of payments uh, behind the big four banks. Um, we've got our banking license so about three or four years ago now, so um, very much into the banking products along. Um, so we've got term deposits, we've got uh, bank accounts, uh, lending products and e-commerce. Um, so yeah, really diversifying our product range. Uh, and this has been a really good opportunity to diversify our technology and customer experience. Yeah, if we go to the next slide, 
it just talks about um, you know what the service challenge was when we first connected and how Matchboard really helped us out. Um, obviously with the vision, and Tyro has been growing really rapidly. So I think I saw the latest numbers, 25% year on year, which is huge in, in the industry you're in. Uh, but they had some real problems with the telephony platform initially. The MyTel system was um, uh, having outages and poor customer experience and, and brand challenges. So they really wanted to get um, into a better solution for that. Also making change in that solution was really tough. Um, they looked for a supplier, which um, they had certain criteria around customer experience, service operations and technology to bring that blend together um, and reached out to Matchboard to try and find out um, who that supplier might be. We were lucky enough that Matchboard um, selected us to um, put forward a proposal and, um, and then we got selected. I mean, I think the big thing for us and Craig can probably breathe more life into Tyro was um, for us, it's a real win-win connection when we connect with customers. Sharon takes a hard leg workout. So we know when we're connecting with somebody, it's, it's valuable conversations that we had and we can actually make a real difference. Um, it reduces our cost of sale, which we can pass on to the customer. So it, it actually is a really good um, solution for us. And for Tyro, Craig, I don't know if, if you can have a quick, whilst you weren't there, you might be able to breathe some life into this one. Yeah, sure. I think, um, I mean, where we started at Tyro is, is that um, we were, well, a fintech is predominantly around the technology that they leverage off of. And, uh, you know, over the last couple of years, we've gone from, uh, well, a relatively small organisation up to about 500 people. Uh, but about half of our 500 people are technical engineers um, and the IT gurus. So customer experience was most probably on the back burner. Um, and so ever since they, we've got our banking license, then the differentiator really is a customer experience. So we sort of realised that there were seven or eight problems uh, in regards to the customer experience and the, the telephony platform that we were using at the time was very much the foundation for most of those problems. Um, and that's, yeah, we started with the, the problem awareness and, and um, that's when we went to Sharon and the team at Matchboard to, to match us up with um, customer science. And just to sort of grow on that a little bit, I think, um, yeah, our relationship with customer science was perfectly matched, uh, culturally perfectly matched, capability and knowledge, but also industry experience as well. So, yeah, I, as Todd alluded to, I've really come into the, the, the process that already started, but um, my role was really just to enhance that relationship. And, uh, yeah, we've, we've definitely worked extremely well together over the last sort of 12 months or so. Yeah. Just to illustrate that, what, what actually happened was um, Matchboard introduced us in because there were requirements to be gathered. You know, what should the future vision for uh, Tyro's telephony platform, which was, as we mentioned before, hamstringing um, Tyro from all the great things they were trying to achieve. And we've been on this journey and without going into the detail over several stages now, and ultimately we're looking to um, support, um, you know, real, once this platform is in place, it gives a real opportunity to do more. Um, Craig, did you want to talk a bit about the actual experience? Yeah, sure. So I think, um, well, over the last sort of 18 months or so, as I said, we after going to Matchboard and we uh, got matched up with Customer Science, then Customer Science came into our organisation and really started to dig in and open the bonnet up uh, around customer experience uh, and the telephony platform that we currently had. And so um, they worked really closely with us around the ideal design based on our needs, uh, based on our problems that we identified. Um, and then uh, with the initial design, we went uh, to market with a bit of a pilot. Uh, we did it that for, it was about three months. So we did the pilot for um, post pilot, we came back, worked super closely with customer science um, and identified there was other opportunities with other bits of functionality and other type uh, platforms. So um, leverage on for their expertise and skill uh, in the marketplace. That's when we um, ended up going live. So between um, identifying that customer science was the best partner uh, and going live, it was about a six to month, six to nine month uh, process, which for me, I've worked in lots of other large institutions that could have been two years through that program of work. So, mm. yeah, the, the speed to market was incredible. Um, and the experience internally was very much uh, all of our frontline team members uh, in our sales area and our, our service contact centre were heavily involved in the design. 
Um, so when, once we went live, although going live in the middle of a pandemic most probably is also very challenging. <laughs> Um, but we, yeah, the full remote go live uh, was very successful as well. Yeah, and I think there's a huge amount of credit uh, when Craig arrived. We see really painted the vision for where we were all going um, and really tightened up a lot of that uh, relationship as well. All the green pits you see there and the service evolution was where we've just done things outside the norm of our engagement um, that helped us both. You know, it was really good experience. And um, I think we'll talk in the next slide um, Sharon on the benefits that we got and the, the core benefits that we're aiming for at the beginning was a return on investment so that we could reduce cost to serve, help the customer and really help Tyro and Craig you probably got you've got a lot more detail about this one so do you want to take a bit more info on that? Yeah sure so I think um, you know, the, the biggest challenge we've had uh, that we the, the transition from um, so just to dig into a, our history a little bit that we had um, our rostering was done on an Excel spreadsheet um, we had uh, our quality management was hit and miss and done on an Excel spreadsheet uh, our ability to be flexible with our telephony platform was almost non-existent and even to get a new staff member or frontline team member to come and join um, Tyro and be logged into the phone uh, took up to two weeks uh, through our third party uh, support. So our baseline was very low um, and it almost feels like we've gone from being in the uh, just a, uh, you know, Hyundai i30 to a BMW 8 Series um, in the way that we're uh, actually operating now. So taking into account all the, the transformation and the change management was our, our big challenge. And as I said, uh, change management through a pandemic when we've got 100% of our uh, contact centre staff, sales and service working remotely, uh, also added another big challenge. Um, the benefit overall for us has been a sort of 30% reduction in cost to serve. Um, and uh, really that's just because we've gone from, a, it was almost on-prem to a, a cloud-based solution. Um, but the efficiency that we're gaining through uh, being able to customise our core flows skills-based routing, uh, now rostering as well, uh, means that that sort of 30% is rel relatively baseline at the moment. Uh, and we haven't even really tried to optimise uh, the overall operating model yet. Yeah, I think Craig's also, you've, you've developed an uh, amazing platform. You had a vision that it's not just a telephony platform, but you know, it provides a central piece to future things. Um, and I think, um, you know, the discussion around trying to optimise for scale that you're doing at the moment um, will see even greater benefits. So really smart uh, solution um, that Craig's done a great job of driving. So congratulations. Yeah, thank you. I think that our biggest challenge is uh, looking at that growth and looking at that scale. So uh, our ultimate forecast is to grow 30% year on year. Um, and we, uh, even with the COVID challenges that we've got, then that's still our aspirational state. So to have a platform that enables that growth um, and help our frontline team members grow at the same time uh, is really exciting. And then once we've got the stabilisation of the embedding of the new platform, then we can look at other, well, our plan is to look at other um, functionality, for example, you know, ID verification and voice analytics and uh, bio, voice biometrics um, and all that funky stuff that we can actually really totally optimise the platform. And at the same time, I mean, that's going to be our competitive advantage moving forward. So, yeah, really excited about the next evolution, the next phase of our customer experience. Thanks so much, guys, Todd and Craig. That was a great story that you just shared. Um, if you don't mind, I'm going to move on to the next case study now. So, um, I'm actually delighted to introduce Valerie from the University of Tasmania and Les from the TNC group. So University of Tasmania came to match board with a, a contact center outsourcing requirement, which TNC uh, subsequently was successful in uh, delivering. So over to you, Valerie and Les. Yeah, thanks, Sharon. Um, uh, we are delighted, obviously, to be part of this conversation today and, and thank everyone uh, for, for coming along. Um, our relationship with uh, Matchboard has been there for a few years now and uh, we, we see it as a critical element of our success um, going forward in, in terms of our growth and, and building our expertise across uh, the industries where we operate and those that we don't. 
Um, in terms of what we do, we're really an outsourced business support service 24 seven, Australian owned and operated based in uh, that lovely place called Melbourne. Uh, but we also have uh, an extension of our office in Wollongong. We specialise in delivering bespoke solutions to solve operational pain points. So that obviously means a lot of collaboration and a lot of seeking uh, to understand uh, defining problems and that type of work. But uh, in essence, what we do do, and this might be resonating with the audience, is uh, contact centre overflow as an example, or extending current operations to after hours where you know, the cost might be quite prohibitive to a current organisation. So when we talk about bespoke, um, I, I might just um, quickly hand over to our very good partner in crime, uh, Valerie, to talk about uh, UTAS, which is one of our most valued clients. Thank you very much, Les, and, and thanks to everyone for taking your time to be here today. It's a terrific pleasure to, for us to be able to speak with you. Um, so from our perspective at the University of Tasmania, I'm one of the work health and safety advisors here, and we have literally thousands of expeditions each year across a very diverse range of activities, um, very diverse range of people, environments, and topography as well. And many of these carry a much higher level of risk than a your typical day job. So UTAS, University of Tasmania, really needed a qualified partner to help us monitor the safety of our field work teams. And if you could maybe go to the next slide. So um, with this diverse range uh, and, and higher risk activities that we're conducting at the university, the critical challenge for us was to assure the safety and well-being of our people. So whether it be a four-wheel drive rollover in a remote area of our bush in Tasmania during a devil research mission, or a diver with a serious hand injury on the west coast of Tasmania with very poor communications capabilities, or a vessel that just simply doesn't report in during a weather event. These are our risks and these are what keep us awake at night. So another example is last year we had a devastating bushfire that, was, that closed the highway home for a team that was meant to be using a boat ramp in the area to exit and, and make their way home. So these are only a few examples of why the University of Tasmania needed a qualified partner to monitor the safety of our fieldwork teams. But in the middle of our research calendar, our existing monitoring partner retired their services, and we had less than a month to rectify this. Uh, additionally, the other challenge was looking at this service through the eyes of the entire university platform. So we have huge differences in our organizational unit needs, their expectations, the way they operate, from maritime to animal husbandry facilities um, to healthcare workers making home visits. And then the uh, final broad challenge was the manually intense process that, we, that was being used and the potential gaps within the technology that was being employed. Yeah, thanks Valerie. So what we ended up doing at TMC was to, um, through a very extensive uh, chatting and discussing and trialling and testing and failing and succeeding and trying again, was um, to come up with a new uh, process which was pretty much introducing more of the human element into the, uh, the previous process, um, automating uh, what we see as the fundamentals of the process. And we'll give you an example shortly just to, to highlight how this actually works. But uh, you imagine someone's going into the field, uh, they, they give a, an itinerary to say where they're going, when they're checking in, and when they're supposed to be coming home. We call that an itinerary check-in and safe arrival process. Um, that's all great if it works, uh, but you need an escalation process to handle uh, things when they go wrong. So we, we uh, have uh, some fairly clever systems that we've put into play around uh, based on time sets in the itinerary and the check-ins. Um, to, to make sure that uh, people are doing uh, what they should be doing by way of checking in. Sometimes they forget, so we can nudge them to, to inform them um, and, and in fact check in whether they are actually safe or, or, or they've just forgotten. Um, and we can do that in a number of different ways and we've included calls and SMSs as, as an example. Um, but we, uh, we, we apply those depending on the urgency or in fact the incident uh, as well as um, if, if there was a, a, a really catastrophic situation, um, we would uh, involve the emergency services. Uh, and the way we do that um, and, and have uh, applied the various technologies, um, uh, we won't know that as omni-channel, 
is we've got a, an integrated platform there for UTAS where um, this, the, the trips are set up initially via the itinerary and then it's really up to the, uh, the traveller as to the, uh, the technology they might want to use. So some are better with voice, some like emails, some like sat phones or need sat phones because they might be out of range as uh, Valerie alluded to before. Uh, there's personal devices um, which would be things like Garmin in-reach devices where uh, people just have those as their personal safety device. So they just click a button and it comes through us and, and we take care of the, uh, the issue. Um, and that's important because not every traveller has the same uh, disposition for technology. And uh, you would know that when you're out in the field that some communications don't actually work. So data may not work where a personal device does or a sat phone does. So it's important that we're able to handle as, as, as many different types of communication to, to maximise the ability to contact um, UTAS or, or, or their travellers. So then uh, we wrapped it all up with a dashboard um, and that dashboard is critical for the UTAS leadership team to see at a glance where their travelling or their remote working staff um, are at any time and their status. So that is a, a good feel for people who are are wondering about what's actually happening out in the field. There might be several people in different departments out in the field. Um, there's a one-stop shop there in terms of the dashboard just for anyone to see where that's at. So perhaps if um, we just go to a quick example, uh, Valerie, and, and if you'd like to describe um, how that might work, and, and then I can add to that by way of how we handle it. So one of our key organizational units is IMAS, the Institute for Marine and Antarctic Studies. Um, so they send a travel plan uh, to TMC to identify the travelers and a destination time. And the plan is to have a one day field trip to survey Abalone. They travel by road um, with a trailered vessel to a boat ramp and they launch the vessel. And they travel then by vessel um, in a maritime environment to a remote dive site, return back to the boat ramp and then return to home base. So there's a variety of risk features there and a variety of um, targeted uh, check-ins that we want. Thanks, Valerie. And so what Liz. we do, thank you, uh, we create an itinerary around these, as was saying before. We set the alerts to the required times for monitoring and reporting. Uh, the travellers um, uh, can check in on time, as we would expect at the, the first checkpoint, which in this case was a boat ramp. We then um, had to check in on travellers due to uh, a missed check-in. Um, so that happens, uh, bad weather, prevented us, so um, may have forgotten to talk to us, but that's okay, we pick it up and then we reschedule the check-ins uh, from there. The travellers check in on the time the following day for a vessel departure and again a return um, with no issues. So that was all a, a fairly simple uh, uh, expedition that went reasonably well um, and no escalations were required and the travel plans then closed and uh, it has got the, and the, the, the staff have uh, had uh, a safe trip and uh, with the comfort of being monitored. Thanks, I, th I think the thing that perhaps the key learning I can share from this experience is how important it is to find partnerships that suit not just your service or product needs, but your values. And the University of Tasmania is very much a values driven organization. So matching our needs with a highly responsive and resilient team like TMC, it's really, it's about the relationship. Learning drives the innovation and TMC is able to leverage this in the bespoke manner that we needed. It's about the match and it's about the partnership. And that's what we've been able to, um, to, to do in this process. So I appreciate everyone's involvement in that. Thanks, Thank you. Thanks so much, Les and Valerie. That was Definitely not your typical contact center outsourcing case study, and I hope everyone found that really interesting as I did. Um, moving on to our final case study now, I'd like to introduce uh, Michael McKeend from um, HealthCX and Daniel Harding from Max Contact. Um, HealthCX came to Matchboard looking for a cloud contact center technology solution. So uh, over to you guys to share how that all went. Yeah, thanks, Sharon, and thanks for having us on. Um, really interesting seeing how the other two partnerships worked and the difference in, the, um, in them partnerships. Um, we've worked with Matchboard now for a period of time in, in Australia. Um, 
and it's it's a really good go to market solution for for our product down here. So we are a cloud based contact center solution. So we work with a number of uh, different industries, so sales teams, customer experience teams, fundraisers, allied health centers, um, BPOs, etc. Um, and it's really good to come together and work with Health CX and Michael in particular via the partnership with Sharon. Do you want to elaborate, Michael? Yeah, sure. So um, just in regards to Health CX and thanks to Oz Contact and Fiona and Sharon for having us um, today. And uh, likewise, I think you've had some great stories already. But uh, Health CX is um, an allied health um, customer experience um, organisation. And what we do is try to uh, allow healthcare professionals to focus on what they do best. And that's obviously with the animal or with the patient. Uh, so taking some, um, I guess, um, some pressure off them with their inbound phone calls. So in a virtual reception sense, um, really depending on you know what level um, that, that, that health practice wants to take it from an overflow solution to a full service to a you know overnight 24 7 type operation uh, so we run inbound and also outbound um, client re-engagement programs which is really around you know obviously trying to fill the funnel of healthcare practices um, our primary markets um, are in veterinary dental and chiropractic at present um, and we also run a um, customer uh, sorry a uh, um, customer care training programs, which is really around educating, you know, how to engage clients the best from a customer, you know, face-to-face -face and telephone side of things. Um, so we previously, up until um, having a, the excellent experience running into Sharon, um, we were using um, multiple different systems to be able to try and um, keep all of our phone calls under one roof. Um, and we touch base with Matchboard to help us try and find, I guess, one solution that was able to, to help us um, to, I guess, keep everything streamlined and, and deliver um, multiple services to multiple practices, which were based all across Australia. Um, and we had the, you know, um, the excellent um, experience dealing um, with Max Contact, um, more so from a personal point of view, just really took the time to understand what it was that we needed. Uh, very personable, but sort of very um, accurate in terms of follow-up times and commitment to timeframes to be able to deliver what we needed to do. We so happened to be right in the middle of the pandemic or just actually rolling out. So we needed to mobilise, I guess, a, a, a mobile workforce working from home. So uh, it was fairly quick from there that we were able to um, get up and running under the Max Contact solution. Um, so Dan and his team did a really amazing job to help us kick off yeah, as Michael says, um, it, it coincided with, I think it was early March, so very beginning of lockdown. So when we got the initial notification from Matchboard, it was quite an exciting um, opportunity because it was so different to what we normally do. Um, I think after having initial conversations with Michael, we could, we could understand his business model, what they were trying to achieve. Um, and I think it was quite personal, mainly most families do have pets etc and you can understand the when you get in touch with a, a allied health service or a veterinary service it can be um, a little bit of a stressful time and what Michael's trying to to achieve is reducing that stress for for both the, the practice and for the the end client um, so it was quite a, an interesting project for us um, as Michael mentioned he has a remote workforce all around Australia, so he was really looking for a converged solution that could uh, handle work from home agents. This allows him, Michael, to get the best possible representatives for his businesses. So that is really key for, for Michael. I know the guys, the agents themselves are really personal to take time to, to understand the challenges. Um, and that Michael can do that now. He's got staff all around Australia and he's not fixed in one location. Um, yeah, and, and like Dan says, that it was certainly in the middle of um, the whole COVID kicking off and we moved under that system. Um, and so the cloud-based and the solution that Max Contact were able to offer us was really ticked all of our boxes. Um, it made it really easy to onboard somebody who, you know, was just working from their home location in Perth or, you know, in South Australia or Northern Territory. It, it made it really easy for us to do that. Um, I guess our collaboration um, together has been really trying to um, build for the future and how we can um, take, I guess, the Max Contact 
um, I mean, oh, there's so many elements of um, what Dan's um, solution does at Max Contact that we haven't even sort of explored yet, uh, which we're really keen to get involved, which is, you know, the um, web-based chat and so forth for healthcare. So, you know, our research tells us that we know a lot of our clients or our clients' clients are, are really, um, you know, a lot of the time online and, you know, maybe at work or doing something and dropping, you know, lines in via websites and so forth. So we, we haven't really tapped into that as yet, but certainly part of our plan. So it's great for us to know that we're able to grow with the Max Contact solution and be able to um, continue to sort of enhance um, those sorts of um, technologies, you know, with SMS and, and online chat, et cetera. Um, I guess just really simply um, some key things that we've noticed from a pure business perspective is um, that we've been able to onboard clients a lot faster um, on the Max Contact system where previously using a multitude of phone programs that were very clunky, uh, we've probably at least been able to double the time uh, or sorry, and shorten the time by at least half in terms of how long it took, but certainly been able to triple the volume of our outbound phone calls. Um, and that's probably on the conservative side with Max Contact. Um, and we've also saw a massive decrease in our call cost um, on a month to month basis. So, um, you know, even in, in a short amount of time, we've, we've seen some amazing benefits to, to the bottom line. And obviously small business still starting out and obviously dealing with, you know, um, different healthcare professionals is obviously challenging. So trying to keep our costs at a, at a level that makes us be able to provide these services, particularly on a 24 seven basis. Yeah, as, as Michael says, it's the project overall, um, he, he was looking to converge his technology and also plan for the future. So it's great in our overview that Michael can go, okay, I've gone with the guys today, let's get the, the voice element sorted. Um, and he knows he can do live chats, email, SMS, etc. going forward. So it's good that Michael feels relaxed um, and the Health CX guys know that they've built for the future and they can scale their business as it grows. Um, part, of, part of our offering is service. Obviously, Michael is in the service environment and he, he provides service to his clients and we try and element that to, us, to Michael as well. So um, I know the guys at Health CX have been happy with the overall service and that comes down to the to the initial match i think with matchboard um matching partners who are going to be able to work together and uh, build for the future yeah and i think um the matchboard team do an amazing job to be able to do that and even in our initial conversation with them um, it was quite clear the level of person uh, I guess the personal approach and the understanding and the time um, that they take to actually understand what we do, which was, which was fantastic. And then that was then just reinforced once we were connected uh, with Dan and the Max contact team. And then just some of the basic things, you know, is it's, you know, really, it's really positive and actually gives you a lot, a lot more faith in humankind to see that there are, you know, businesses still operating um, like this that do take time to have a genuine conversation and understand, you know, nothing's been too much trouble for Max contact and we're we're probably the furthest from technical people um, and you know so there's I can think of numerous times that um, you know I've been out of an office at a meeting or one of my operations managers been out of the office and didn't have a, a computer or a laptop and there may have been an issue with a particular agent that you know was having a trouble connecting because of something that was on our end obviously but you know, nothing's too much hassle for them to jump in and help out and get them back on the, on, on the show um, but yeah really as far as um, we're concerned it's been such a really pleasant experience experience um, and we look forward to growing with both Max Contact and obviously continue with uh, with Matchboard. Uh, we're actually, you know, happy to to help out and, um, with Matchboard and, you know, any other healthcare practices who are potentially looking to sort of come on board as well. So we've got a two-way relationship now, which is really fantastic for us. Thank you yeah, so much. <laughs> Daniel, did you want to make a closing remark? Yeah, I was, I was literally just about to repeat what Michael said, saying congratulations for, for Matchboard, for matching us. It was, say, a refreshing project, um, and it's one that we work closely with Michael on. So, yeah, thanks a lot for the, for the onboarding of it. Pleasure. And I want to thank all the case study speakers for being absolutely on time because now we actually have 10 minutes left for Q&A if there are any questions. Thanks, Sharon, and thanks, everyone. Doesn't it just... 
amaze you that this industry is so diverse and yet we're so aligned in what it is we want to deliver for our respective customers. Um, I love hearing stories and the tales, you know, and Matchboard taking the lead with innovation within the industry and how vital innovation truly is in contact centres and how dynamic we are and how we never cease to change and we will continue on, on, on that change. So Sharon, you're an entrepreneur at heart. In fact, you are an entrepreneur and you are probably the entrepreneur at the moment. So what advice do you have for any body, budding entre- entrepreneurs, English is my first language, uh, that, are on, that are with us today? You wouldn't, you'd be amazed that English is my first language. I get that. <laughs> yeah. Uh, thanks, Fiona. I think um, even if you're not an entrepreneur yet and maybe you're working for a company and you want to do something entrepreneurial that makes you an intrapreneur. (laughs) That's actually a word. Um, I have a few tips for you. Um, So the first one would be uh, get exposure to the whole startup world. And you can do that by going to pitch nights, even online ones where uh, entrepreneurs get up and give pitches about their ideas. You can start subscribing to startup media, and joining startup groups on Facebook. And before you know it, you'll catch the entrepreneurial bug like I did. So that's one tip. Uh, Another one would be um, you're trying to come up with a business idea. Think of a frustration or a problem that you experience um, for which you can't see an obvious solution. And then you can start by making a habit of writing down those recurring frustrations that you have on a daily basis. And one of them might be a beautiful business idea. So the third tip is, validate that business idea by asking not just your friends and family who love you but um impartial potential customers the ones who are going to have to open their wallet to give you money for your idea and and see what they think of it because you've got to have evidence that customers will love your idea or use it or buy it um if you're going to make that big leap of faith and, and do something entrepreneurial Fantastic. So we've got a sh- oh, we've got a question that's come in. Let's just have a look. Oh, Vanessa, what a fantastic question! It's for you, Sharon. As a call centre service provider, how do we get involved with Matchboard? <laughs> <laughs> well, that's very easy. We can have an offline chat, and I'll walk you through the process. Fantastic. There's a, a, another couple of questions, um, and and one is about. Most of what you do is online. So we can go to the the Matchboard website and fill in the online questionnaire or go to the Find a Supplier page on the OzContact website. But does Matchboard also offer phone consultations if you're not sure about the type of supplier that could best help uh, achieve goals? Yes. In fact, we're one of the few companies that shows our phone number on every page on our website because we encourage people to call us. Sometimes people have a goal, like they want to um, improve their business performance in some way, but they're actually not sure what they need to do that. So I encourage people to just give a call and we can brainstorm together. It could be that you need some consulting help. It could be that we can point you straight to a solution provider in the market that has exactly what you uh, need. So, um, yeah, if anyone listening would like to have a chat about a particular requirement, they don't know yet what to fill out on our website, just give, give us a buzz. Fantastic. So we've got a question, uh, maybe for Les. Yes, oh, he's thanks, gone. Oh, my Anna. goodness me. Um, right here. Right. Have you found it easy or difficult to recruit during COVID? And how has your recruitment and training changed? Double well, barrel. Thank you. Um, for the first, uh, we don't have any problem recruiting people. Um, in COVID, obviously, people are looking for work. So in our world, it's, uh, it's not that hard. Uh, training is a little bit more of a challenge, obviously, because people are working remotely. And uh, so we're evolving our training around that. Um, so we use team members, um, or Microsoft Teams, beg your pardon as a, the collaboration tool to train our agents and we'll take them off, off, the, off, off, off air to develop them. Uh, and, and it could be relating to just onboarding them, um, which is not a difficult process for us. Um, our, in essence, our basic services are very simple to, to, to do. Um, but what we do is uh, develop them in the role 
and we have uh, some clients who are more specifically required uh, handling of their, their calls and then their customer types. So we will do some training for those guys uh, before they get involved in, in those types of calls. So the, the challenge, uh, again, is not so much recruiting, it's more around training and uh, we're evolving this uh, and we're learning <laughs> new ways of training uh, to, to teach people uh, as we go. Um, but yeah, on, online is the way to go at the minute. Right, thank you. Michael, what's it been like for you? Yeah, well, we've been quite blessed. So in healthcare, we've, um, you know, um, people wanting to reduce the amount of, um, I guess, people in practices for, for obvious reasons around uh, those social distancing side of things. So we've been open to a workforce that, you know, we probably weren't really able to access um, now those people are at home. So, you know, in, particularly in our veterinary business, you know, a lot of, um, a lot of young, you know, um, female vets who, you know, usually would choose not to sort of work in an emergency type centre overnight or the early hours. You know, we've had access to them to be able to help um, give advice to pet owners overnight um, now because they, they obviously feel the comfort of being in, in their own home. So it's worked really well from a recruitment side of things for us. In terms of training, much like Les um, use Microsoft Teams and obviously just need to adapt. I think in some ways it actually works a bit better so you can sort of sporadically do that training as you need to. Obviously onboarding is a, is a good block to get them up and running. But then secondly throughout, you know, you can find those, um, you know, the double parts of the day where you can sort of zap in and, and, and do some of that top up sort of training and so forth. So, you know, for us, it's probably worked really well, um, but it's really helped us to enhance, I guess, um, all of those healthcare practices um, to, to be able to help them at the drop of a hat um, so quickly. Thank you. Um, we have a question for Todd and Craig. Um, can you talk a little bit more on the technical solution that was deployed? So you've, par you've picked someone's interest. Sure, so um, Todd, you can jump in where you need to, uh, but you know, at a, uh, essentially we had a Mitel platform. Uh, we've now transitioned to Amazon Connect, um, which is a uh, cloud-based solution that um, is a basic user pays type platform. Um, we also have got Verant as our quality management system and our workforce management uh, platform as well. Um, so uh, as I said prior to that, we just were working off Excel spreadsheets. So from an analytic perspective, um, the ability with Amazon to actually move agents around at a drag and drop um, within the platform itself can be done instantaneously. Uh, to set up new call flows can be done instantaneously. By, by drag and drop. Um, so the flexibility of the functionality is just phenomenal. Fantastic. Um, Sharon, for you. So what are the key benefits of Matchboard from a vendor's perspective? <laughs> well, the key benefits are that our model means um, you get perfectly matched with companies um, who are looking for exactly what you want. So you don't waste time with unqualified sales conversations. And secondly, um, the service is free to use. There's a, a fee if you win a match through us, but otherwise it's free to participate for all sides. That sounds fantastic. And some people might say too good to be true, but we know it's not um, because we've seen how the perfect matches worked right throughout uh, the webinar today. So with that, we're almost at the hour. I would love to ask Sharon whether you have any closing comments or anything you'd like to to say before we give our thanks to all of our speakers today. No, this is my uh, Matchboard's first webinar with OzContact, so I'm really delighted with the, the big attendance um, and the interest that's um, been shown. So thank you all for tuning in. Um, and I would really encourage you to go onto matchboard.com.au just to see if there's anything there we could help you with or any interesting articles or white papers you might want to download and have a read of. Fantastic. Well, thank you very much, Sharon, uh, for your partnership with OzContact over, well, the last eight years um, since, since inception. It's you and I obviously have a wonderful relationship, but we're so grateful of the, the partnership. Thank you to you, to Valerie, to Les, to Daniel, to Todd, to Craig and Michael, who all had such interesting and rich 
stories to share with such diversity. To everyone that attended today, thank you so much for being part of today's event. And I wish you a wonderful rest of your day, wherever you might be, and stay safe and stay well. See you next time. Thanks, everyone. Bye. Bye.